Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video on stereochemistry, I'll be talking about how to find RNS. There are three different scenarios that you might encounter when you're trying to determine RNS. The first is when the fourth party is on a dash. The second is when the fourth party is on a wedge, and the third is when the fourth party is in the plane. So I'll be talking to you about the methods, and this is just an overview of what I'll be talking about. Okay, so the first scenario is when we have the fourth party on a dash, and so what I have to do is I have to assign priorities. So here's my fluorine, my chlorine, my bromine, and my hydrogen. And then I want to go ahead and assign priorities. So you can either use atomic number or atomic mass, either way is fine. So using atomic number the bromine is at 35 so it's going to be first priority followed by the chlorine which is at 17 followed by the fluorine which is at 9 and then the fourth priority is going to be the hydrogen which is at 1. So now that I've assigned the priorities I have to determine if this is R or S. Well considering that the fourth priority group is on a dash the only thing I have to do is determine if the numbers 1, 2, 3 are clockwise or counterclockwise. So when I check here 123 they are moving in a clockwise direction so I can conclude that this molecule has an absolute configuration of R okay so here we have a second scenario to assign absolute configuration where we have the fourth priority group on a wedge so what we have to do here is first assign the priority so if you look you might notice that some of these groups that are attached to the chiral center don't just have one atom so for example the NH2 group or the OH group when we're looking at groups that have other atoms coming off, we're only going to be looking at the atom that is directly attached to the chiral center. So for NH2, you're going to be looking up nitrogen. And for OH, you're going to be looking up oxygen. So let's go ahead and assign priorities. We're going to start by looking at hydrogen. Then we have oxygen, nitrogen, and chlorine. So when we're trying to assign the priorities here, the chlorine is going to be first priority because it's at 17 for atomic number. Then and the oxygen is going to be at 8, and then the nitrogen is at 7, so that's going to be number 3, and then the fourth priority is going to be the hydrogen at 1. So now we can go ahead and see if this is moving clockwise or counterclockwise. And when we're doing the switch rule, it tells us that when the fourth priority group is on a wedge, if the molecule looks like it's R, it's actually S. And if it looks like it's S, it's actually R. So in this case, when we do 1, 2, 3, it looks like we're going counterclockwise, right? So that looks like S. However, because of the switch rule, which we have to use when the fourth priority is on a wedge, we can conclude that this is actually R configuration. Here we have the third and final scenario where the fourth priority group is in the plane. So for this scenario, again, we have to assign priority. So we're looking at sulfur, fluorine, oxygen, and hydrogen. So here we have the sulfur, the fluorine, the oxygen, and the hydrogen. So sulfur is going to win first priority because it's at 16. And then we've got the fluorine, which is at 9. Then we have the oxygen at 8. And then last priority is going to be the hydrogen at 1. So in this case, as you can see, the fourth priority group is in the plane. So what we do when the fourth priority group is in the plane is we use the double switch rule. The way that that works is you're going to put the fourth priority group in the dash, which is where you would really want it to be. So the way we do that is we're going to switch 4 and 2. So by putting 4 over here and 2 over here, now my fourth priority group is on a dash, but I also then have to switch 1 and 3 to make sure that I'm not changing the absolute configuration from what it really is. So 3 would go here and 1 would go here. Now I can check to see what the absolute configuration is since the fourth priority group is in the back. So we're going to go around and check. So if I go 1, 2, 3, it is going to be moving clockwise. So that means that the absolute configuration here is R, and it truly is R. We don't have to switch it again or anything, since now the fourth priority group is in the back. Okay, so let's look at an example problem that you might see, where you have to find the chiral centers and then determine if the absolute configuration at each chiral center is R or S. So here we first want to identify the chiral centers. So if we look at this carbon right here, we have to ask ourselves, does this carbon have four unique groups attached to it? Well, we see it's got a methyl group, and then when we go this way around the ring, 
it's different than when we go this way around the ring. Because if we go this way, we're going to hit the methyl group first compared to if we go this way. So then the fourth group that we're looking for is going to just be the hidden hydrogen. So remember that if this methyl is on a dash, then there's also a hydrogen on this carbon that's on a wedge. And then if we check the other carbon here to see if it's a chiral center, we find that it has a methyl group and then going this way around the ring is different than going this way around the ring. So those are two different groups. And then the fourth group is going to be the hidden hydrogen again, where we're going to have a hydrogen here on a dash. So we can conclude that both of these carbons are indeed chiral centers. So the next thing that we have to do is determine R and S. So I'm going to start with the chiral center on the left side. So first we need to assign priority, but this is a little trickier than the questions we looked at before. Because if you look here, I've got a carbon atom versus a carbon atom versus a carbon atom versus a hydrogen atom. So it's quite obvious that the hydrogen is going to be fourth priority. But what about the other three carbons? We have to break the tie. The way that you break the tie is you're going to list the three atoms that are attached to each of those carbons, not including the chiral center. So if I start with this carbon right here. The three atoms that it's attached to are hydrogen, 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 not including the chiral center. Then for this carbon down here, the three atoms would be carbon, because it's attached to this carbon right here, as well as two hydrogens. Notice that when I list them, I want to list them so that the best priority comes first. So that's why I wrote carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, as opposed to hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon. And then I'm going to look at the last carbon right here. That one is attached to a carbon over here, as well as two hydrogens. So again, carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. So this helps me a little bit, because it tells me that the loser in this case, or third priority, is going to be this methyl group, because hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen is not going to win against these two carbons. So I am comparing this hydrogen to these two carbons, and I decide that the hydrogen is the loser, making it third priority. But now I still have another tie that I need to break between this group and this group. The way that I break the tie is I move on to the next carbon. So I'm comparing this carbon to this carbon now. So when I'm comparing them, again, I'm going to list the three things that they're attached to, but I'm not going to go backwards. So I'm not going to list this carbon and I'm not going to list this carbon for the bottom one. You always want to keep moving outward. So when I'm starting with this guy, the three things that he's attached to are a carbon, a carbon, and a hydrogen. So I'm going to list them in that order, carbon, carbon, hydrogen. And then when I look at the one on the bottom, this one is attached to carbon and two hydrogens. So carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. So the winner is going to be the one on the top. Because even though we have a tie between carbon, carbon, this carbon is going to beat out this hydrogen. So that tells me that my first priority is going to be right here. And then my second priority is going to be right here. So now I see that my fourth priority is on a wedge. So I know that I have to use the switch rule. So when I go with my one, two, three, I see that they're going clockwise. So this looks like it's R. However, my fourth party group is on a wedge, which tells me that this is actually S. So now I'm going to go ahead and clean up some of this stuff so that it's easier for us to assess the second chiral center. Now let's go ahead and figure out the absolute configuration of the second chiral center. Go ahead and pause the video and then you can check your work. First thing we need to do is assign priorities. We know that the hydrogen is going to be last priority. However, what about this carbon versus this carbon versus this carbon? Again, we're going to list the three things that they're each attached to, not including the chiral center. So for this carbon, it's going to be hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. And then for this carbon right here, it is going to be carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. For this carbon right here, not including the chiral center, it's going to be carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. And so we know that this guy is going to be third priority. But now we need to see because we've got a tie again between this group and this group. So we're going to keep moving down the line, comparing this carbon to this carbon. So for this carbon at the bottom, it's attached to a carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. Whereas for the one at the top, it's attached to two carbons and a hydrogen. So when we list that off and we compare them, we see that the one at the top is going to win. Because even though we have a tie, 
between the first two carbons, this carbon is going to beat out this hydrogen here. And so we know that for priorities, this is going to be first priority, and then the bottom is going to be second priority. So now we want to go ahead and see where the fourth priority group is. Our fourth priority group is on a dash. So that tells us that we can just do normal R and S. If it's going clockwise, it's going to be R and counterclockwise is going to be S. So when we see the order of the numbers 1, 2, 3, we see that they are moving counterclockwise. So this is going to be S configuration. So what we found was that the first chiral center was going to be S, and the second chiral center is also going to be S configuration. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos.